Okay, I think uh, we stop at 17.6.1, so we have to uh, continue. Today we'll be looking at uh, Boolean operations, just like a continuation of where we stop. This is a sub uh, section that is under the chapter 17, which is all about uh, regular expressions in R. Uh, as we all know, uh, a regular expression is one of the very tricky parts uh, when it comes to working programming, uh, working with data in R. It's not something we learn just in a day, it's something we keep on uh, practicing this thing until we get uh, we we get used to it. So so maybe in, in this case we are talking about uh, boolean operations. So once we have such issues, so we have we have our vowel. So as I discussed earlier on, we can use the square uh, brackets, which is no. We are doing what indexing. So maybe when we have the upper carrots, so maybe we are trying to search for specific pattern. Uh, within a string. So that is when we use this upper uh, uh, super sign operator. Then when we have a dollar sign, so that in a dollar sign, we use it to assess uh, for some certain pattern that end with a, 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 particular, uh, uh, a particular kind of screen. So when we know we have a super assignment, so that is the starting, we are checking for all pattern that meet uh, uh, this uh, specific uh, uh, pattern. So here we are still using the str view because the str view, this is still a function that is coming uh, from the string out package. So in this case, we pass in our, our string, which is all the words. So within all the words, what are we looking for? We are looking for all the words that meet this specific pattern. So if we execute this, uh, it's going to return by dry, fly, misses, try, and why. So these are all the words all that, that has this specific pattern in it. So, but at times we might want to use the str, str detect. So within the str detect, we are using the negation symbol, which is not str detect words. We are looking for words that are not, that do not have uh, this, uh, this specific uh, patterns. So when we, we view it in a, a console, so it's going to just return something uh, similar to what, uh, what we have uh, above. But in some set specific case, we can have the, the STR view, they do explain we can use the STR view. Uh, we pass in our words. We have A dot star B iPhone, uh, B dot star A. So we are spec checking, just as I said, uh, find all words that have A, B, and there is no and operator built into the regular. So we have to tackle it by looking for all words that contain an A followed by a B, A, B, A, B followed by an A. So if we execute this again, using our, our, our STR view, so we are going to have A, B, L, E, A, B, out, A, B. So all, all those strings that meet that pattern is just going to sur surround them with this uh, brace, which is a less than and greater than sign. So we, which is going to be used to highlight uh, where we have this pattern matching, where we have those pattern that match within the string. So we can also we can also try a similar approach using str detect. We have our words, which is str detect. What are we detecting in the words? We are checking for a and str detect from words. We are checking for where we have a and b, a and b within the words. So it's going to return this, this this, 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 so it's just uh, going to return, it's just going to return where those pattern, those pattern is uh, positive, where those pattern meet that, that specific condition in which we are passing to the string. So it's just going to return that uh, for us, which is uh, very, very uh, useful. So 
This is the similar thing they did here. They have words, which is the data set. Then they are using STL detect. Then they pass in the word. Then this is the pattern they are looking for. This is also uh, the pattern. Um, is just going to return uh, the results. So we can also execute it in this one where we have words. We are using the, the square bracket, which is like a subsetting, okay? So in that case, we, they have, they use STR detect, then they are using the words. Then the pattern they are looking for is A. They are looking for also here is E. Here they are looking for I. They are also looking for O, and they are also looking for U. So which is the vowels. They are looking for all the vowels uh, that are within the word. So in this case, our return character of zero means that uh, if you go through the words, everything that do not meet uh, this condition, so it's gonna be character zero because those conditions and uh, in which we are trying to check for, uh, we do not have them within the word. So it's just going to return a vector of length zero. Uh, for the next uh, section, they do explain uh, creating a pattern within code, creating pattern within code. So here we have, they use STR view again. Here they have sentences. So within the sentences, uh, they are using the escape symbol, this forward slash, which is uh, when working with string, is used for uh, escape symbol. So they have forward slash uh, and, and brie, which is for to check for all white spaces. So uh, what they are checking for is red, green, blue. It's just going to check for where, uh, where this pattern is true. So it's just going to return that within, uh, within uh, the sentences. Just as I said in my opening uh, statement, uh, the string R, uh, is something uh, we practice uh, over time because at times when I am struck uh, with regular expression, uh, you see me, I will start going through uh, maybe the, the documentation or through stack, stack Overflow to look for possible uh, code snippets, somebody that is similar to what I am trying to achieve at that uh, specific time. I will start going through uh, Stack Overflow, but I, uh, we thank God uh, for the use of uh, chat uh, GPT, uh, but though chat GPT uh, cannot be 100% uh, accurate, but uh, it, will, it will help you, so, uh, walk you through uh, that step for a certain level, but then from that we need to modify uh, the code to suit uh, what we are trying uh, to solve at that moment. So in this case, we have we have a vector, a character vector of where we have red, green, and blue. So this is a character vector of RGB. So within that uh, character vector, what they were trying to do, they're using the STRC, which is STR combined. They want to combine uh, this character vector. So within the STR combined, they pass in a pattern, which is the escape uh, symbol. Then they have to use the STR flatten to flatten uh, the vector. Then they pass in the RGB. They pass in a certain string. And also they end it with another pattern. So in that case, it's just going to return red, green, blue, forward slash, uh, forward, forward slash uh, B. Uh, we, are, we can also use uh, the STR views. Within the STR view, we pass in our colors, which is going to be all the colors that are that is pre-built uh, within R. So if you just say colors, you are going to see all the colors, which is around six hundred and around six hundred and uh, six hundred and fifty-seven colors uh, that are in R. So if you run that, we are going to see all the colors uh, that are in R. So we can have colors all the colors we are saving in an object called colors. Then we have, we call the colors, colors, then STL detects colors that are, that, that has, uh, that has this pattern. So it's just going to return all the colors that meet that specific pattern because this is a pattern we are checking for uh, within the colors. 
So we can also check for this other pattern where we have pattern STRC, which is STR, uh, which is STR combined. Then this is the pattern. Then we use STR uh, flatten, then colors. That is this then. So when we now view our pattern in answer, glue the sheets to the dark blue background, a rod is used to catch pink salmon. So I will just stop there. I don't know if uh, there are questions before we proceed to the next part of our discussion. No, that's good, thank you. Okay, no problem. I think the next part, uh, the next part uh, we talk about uh, is a regular expression in other places. So this one is for us to look at the regular expressions. We shouldn't just look at regular expression within the tidyverse. You know, within the tidyverse, then we were looking at the string R, we'll be looking at the tidy R, and also the deeply R. Because if you look at this package, uh, the development version of this package that is on GitHub, there are new new function in which they have just added uh, to this package, in which some of them I'm not uh, really good with them. I'm still trying to get uh, used to those new functions because very soon, maybe in the next one or two months, they will push it to cram. So to the, it will be stable version. So they are still on active development, but this function, I can tell you, they are used, very useful. So what they explain here, there are three other particular useful places where you might want to use a regular expression. So here they said matches, which is all about pattern. We will select all variable whose name matches the supply pattern. It is a study select function that you can use anywhere, any tidyverse function that select variable select, uh, rename width and order across. Because you know, rename width and across. Across these are deep layer function. I think select, these are all, these are all functions in which we encounter when working uh, with deep layer also. By the longer names underscore pattern. So in Pivot Longer, that is coming from tidy R, names underscore pattern. There we can supply uh, a regular expression. So that regular expression, where that regular expression is true, is just going to return uh, back our vector of where those pattern meet uh, that specific uh, condition. So we can also use the separate wider regex. It is useful when extracting data of variable names with a complex uh, structure. I think the separate uh, wider regex is a new function that is in tidy R. They just added this new function. If you are using the tidy R that is stable, which is still on GitHub, then in that case, you will not have access uh, to this separate wider regex. But if you are using uh, uh, the development version, if you just install the development version from GitHub, so you have access uh, to this function, separate wider regex. So within this separate wider regex, it's for us to give passing our regular uh, expressions. So we also have the delim argument in separate longer delim and separate wider delim. This one matches a fixed string, but you can use regex to make it match a pattern. So. Uh, if you really want to really catch up with this, I think in my previous uh, discussion, I, I went through all these functions step by step, the separate longer delim, the separate wider uh, 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 delim, and also I, I, I touch all these uh, functions if you go through the video in the Slack uh, channel. So like this for base R approach. So let's say for base R, we can use uh, the apropos, then we pass in the pattern, which will search through all objects available uh, from the global environment that matches the given pattern. This is useful if you want, if you can't quite remember the name of a function. So let me say example, we have apropos within the string, I just pass in replace, uh, which will give us all, all the functions uh, that are loaded in our global environment uh, that has uh, that uh, 
pattern replaced. So it's just going to load everything in. And I, and I think uh, this is very useful. Maybe for example, we, you are in a specific project in our studio, then you want to check for all the files that end with the word dot RMD that has all the R Markdown file, or you want to check for all the CSV file or all the XLSX files that are in that directory. You can do that with this function, which is head list.file, then pattern. We just pass in the pattern. So it's going to check for all the files that ends uh, with dot RMD. In this case, we have zero files. So that is why it just return a character, a, a vector of length zero because we do not have anything of such uh, in, in that directory. So they also mentioned that it is worth noting that the pattern language used by base R is very slightly different to that used by string R. That is because string R is built on top of a string, string guide package, which is in turn built on top of ICU engine, whereas base R function use either the tree engine or PCR engine, pending whether not to use set pair equals to true. So like, uh, like in summary, uh, what uh, this chapter, what I really learned about, uh, what I really learned about uh, this chapter is that uh, this chapter is all about, uh, is all about uh, the regular, it's all about working with uh, regular expression in R it, because they also link us to these articles, these are uh, vignettes, uh, which covers everything about the string R and also uh, the regular expression uh, regular working with regular expressions uh, in R. I think uh, that is all I have uh, from the chapter. I don't know. That is all I got for next week. I think we are going to focus, which is a very useful package. It's another package uh, within the tidyverse. The folk you will see how we are going to work with categorical data, how we can easily visualize it, how we can do uh, data wrangling. So this, I don't know if there are any comments or contribution, Tim. Uh, no, I think you covered it. I mean, um, yeah, I think regular expressions are kind of quite complicated, really. So I tend to sort of not do a lot <laughs> of them, really, unless I have to. Um, so, but I, I think there's some good stuff in here to just sort of point you in the right direction, isn't there? Yes, 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 yes. I think next week we'll be looking at another package, which is factors. We'll see how we can work with factors. And you know, if you are talking about factors, which these are categorical data in R, so the first thing that will come to your mind is the focus, uh, is the focus package. So that is what we'll be looking at uh, next week. So. Just as I said, the shine up sheets, if you are interested in any chapter, you can just fill in your name there. But okay. if nobody sign up, then I will take it, I will take it up next week. Uh, and I will lead the discussion if there is nobody that will sign up. Okay, I mean, I, I don't mind doing an, another one if, if you want to. So I, I suppose it makes me read through it properly before the thing as well, doesn't it? If I, if I oh, sign good. up for it. No, no problem, no problem. I will check through the sign up sheet again, maybe weekend, then if there is nobody that sign up, then know that I will take the chapter. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so okay, that's thank great. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next week, Monday. Yep, see you next week. <laughs>